This is kickback. A lot of character. Old mature buck. I couldn't be happier. This is my biggest buck to date. So I'm pretty stoked. I'm Alan Bierman, Knock em Stiff Outdoors, and this is the story about Kickback. Um, I first seen Kickback in 2016. It was the end of hunting season for us. It was uh, in January. I was out checking cameras. I was still chasing the buck last year, late last year. I seen him on the hoof, and I've never seen this deer before, and I was hooked since that day. I figured he was just a pass-through buck. What a pass-through buck is to us is just a buck that passes through your property. Um, so that season was over. I ended up eating my buck tag. I did not kill a buck in 2016. Fast forward to April of 2017. Here we are getting into season, turkey season, starting running trail cameras, and this buck showed back up. And when he showed back up, he put on more mass than I've ever seen before. I had him on five different cameras. I ran cameras all summer for this deer. I kept getting pictures of him on a camera in the back of my property. And so that's where I assumed he was at. I hung a set in the back of the property. I hung a set overlooking a food plot. And that was my dominant hunting spots. They have been for the last four years are those two spots. I hunt this deer. I hunt this deer. I hunt this deer. Can't see this deer. Can't find him. Don't know where he's at. He goes nocturnal. He's not showing up in daylight anymore. All through September, all through October until October 28th. So on October 28th, I got a picture of him at 8.34 in the morning, daylight, morning time. He's never showed up in the morning before, and I knew that that was my opportunity. He slept up one time, and I knew that I had to get in there. Now, the, the camera that he was on, I have never had a picture of him on there before. It was on the complete opposite side of the property. It was actually on the path that I walked in on, so I knew that something was up. I knew the reason why I wasn't seeing this deer whenever I was hunting him in the back of my property had to be that he either seen me or he smelled me or that was his main pass. Something I was doing was causing me not to see this deer because he would come in three consecutive days, I would hunt, he wouldn't be there. He'd come in the next two days, I would hunt, he wouldn't be there. So it had to have been me. That's what I came down to. So what I did was is I, I got an aerial map of that property and I was looking and where he came out on, on that camera I seen that there was a big thicket of hardwoods with an acorn flat so I actually went and hung a stand in that acorn flat on the back side of where that camera would be it was about 160 yards from that camera because I knew if he was coming from that direction he had to be in there somewhere I got in the stand I sat I waited as quiet as I could I took a whole different route to get into the woods to get into the tree stand I parked my truck at a different location so he had no idea that I was there. About 7.15, right before daylight rolls around, I think I hear an estrus, estrus bleep, but I'm not exactly sure. I was kind of nodding off, to be honest. So I played off that. I said, this is my time to strike. It, it's right before rut. It's starting to get hot and heavy. They're starting to seek. I play an estrus bleep. I do an estrus bleep. I do a soft rattle at first, just a little tickle, and then I really get after him. And then I do an immature buck grunt, about a medium, medium sized grunt. I start grunting like he's chasing a hot doe. I do it again, I rattle a little bit more, I do a grunt a little bit more, and then I sit down and I wait. Maybe 10 minutes later, I see a body of a deer. I can't see his rack yet, but I see a body of a deer. I knew he was big coming off this ridge top, headed right down to the acorn flat where I was at. And it happened to be the direction where he was at on that camera on October 28th. And it was him. He broke through the brush. I seen him and I had to get ready. I rolled the camera over there, grabbed my bow, and I was getting a little shaky because it took him quite a while to come in. Maybe about 10 minutes. He was working his way in real slow. 
whenever he finally got in, he was looking for where that rattling was coming from and looking for where that, that hot dough was and he couldn't see her. So he circled my tree, stopped, I couldn't move, I was froze because he circled my tree and he was directly behind me downwind. He turned around, came right back in front of me and I'm leading in with my bow getting ready to stop him and he stops behind the bush. And I'm sitting there waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and you see him body jump and he body jumps and then you see his rack start flinching. I notice his back legs start to get springy and he's getting ready to run. So I knew that I had to pick a spot and I had to let an arrow fly. So there's a small opening in the, in the brush that he was standing behind about three inches. I picked my mark, I shot. Hammered him, double lunged. He ran right back to his bedding area, about 150 yards on the double long, and then it started pouring down rain. I'll tell you, this, this hunt had to be my favorite hunt I've ever been on. Not because it was not on my biggest buck, but it was what I did. I had to outsmart a mature six-year-old 190-inch deer. I had to do something to cause him to come into me, and I couldn't have done it without the black rack. When I hit them black racks together, I mean, he came, he came out on the string, and he was straight convinced, and what hooked me on him is when he went straight into the wind and was trying to win me and he was right behind me and he still didn't care he was looking for where this buck was at where this fight was at and he came out back out in front of me and he didn't run because he was so convinced that there was an immature buck chasing a hot doe and they were fighting i'm sold well we found him guys hunting this deer Good time. I've been dreaming about this deer. Checking, I'm running five cameras around where he's at. I hit the black rack this morning. It was about 8.08. Hit the black rack. Hit the extinguisher call. He came in on a string. Uh, we have no affiliation with black rack whatsoever or extinguisher. I just promote them because they really, really, really do work. Uh, staff member LJ uh, Messer, he shot a buck actually using black rack. He rattled one in. I rattled first thing this morning. This buck's been showing up in daylight pictures in the morning, early morning. So I hammered him. Did about a 90 second, two minute sequence. Did an immature grunt call. I grunt a little bit. And uh, he came right in, 26 yards. Double lunged him. This is kickback. A lot of character. Old mature buck, I couldn't be happier. This is my biggest buck to date, so I'm pretty stoked. When we found him, I, I, can't, I can't explain the joy that I had after I found this deer. I mean, I, I've been hunting hard for two years to try and find a mature whitetail, especially this buck when I first laid eyes on him, and he was finally in my hands. Was 
it's unspeakable. I mean, it was I was ecstatic. So, this was the greatest hunt ever, um, and I you know I couldn't have done it without the help from a lot of friends and my local pro shop and the black rack for sure and the extinguisher. That that call is phenomenal. So that's my story. I'm Alan Beerman, Knock 'em Stiff Outdoors. I'll be seeing you. Welcome to the Deer Society.